I'm here today at the Mile End Climbing Wall in order to compete in the Fossil Fest bouldering competition. Now what's different about this competition is that the minimum age is 40. A few days ago I caught up with the organiser, Dominic. So we've got four age groups, 40s, 50s, 60s and 70 plus. This must be the first time I've ever seen 70 plus in a bouldering competition. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to get a huge amount of entries, but the idea is to make it welcoming for older climbers. So I've got my scorecards here. There's 34 blocks in total, but some are greyed out to show I don't need to do those. So the ones greyed out are not for my category, so that's 25 left. I'm in the 50 plus category for this competition. You'll see different people have different colour scorecards so that they can see what climbs they have to do. You're trying to get the flash attempt on this. So you get 10 points on your first attempt, seven on your second, four on your third, anything more than that, you get two points. So what I normally do is rush around the centre really quickly, marking down what's easy, medium and hard, so that as soon as the competition starts, I can race around to the easy ones to warm up on them. But with this competition, there's no hard time limit. You've got all day. And the other thing is, Dominic's already marked what's easy and definitely not easy on here, which is fantastic. There are over 45 categories in other competitions, mm -hmm. they're called Masters categories. What made you decide to run this event with a 40 minimum age? I've been involved in setting for other competitions where we do have a Masters category, but the problems are generally shared with the younger categories as well. Here we're setting specifically imagining everybody is in their 40s, 50s, 60s or 70s. And that does have an impact on how some of the problems will turn out. I had a quick warm up before meeting my friend. I'm just going to go through this and try and work out what to do first. Let's go find go a quite easy island. I'm a top out though, I don't really want to warm up on a top out. The cave oh, I don't know, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Your definition of fun is very different from mine. <laughs> True, but I'm the one covered in bruises. So a I've bruise got there. this and this. Oh, I wasn't even climbing. Oh. We were doing a photography course and I fell <laughs> off a really easy hold. This is my only one. I just did that yesterday. Well, that's quite a phrase. And that's the Blockfest phrase from a few weeks ago. And this this run I've been getting like one a week, but all in a line. <laughs> After our obligatory show and tell of climbing injuries, I tried my first block. It starts there, hand down, foot, foot. As this had so many good holds, I jumped on after only a few seconds of route reading. But I found it a little more awkward than it first appeared. I didn't see that hold. And this is why route reading is so important, even on super easy climbs. Oh good, that one's better. Oh, that one's nicer as well. Top out scare me. My local gym doesn't have them, so I've only done them a few times. Oh, there's a hold at the top here. There must be a more graceful way of topping out, but I was just glad to have made it. I think most walls have a group, quite often they know each other, but a group of older climbers that may climb with each other, they may not, and they usually climb during the day, not in the evening when it's busy. So the idea is this competition's not going to be super stressy, it's not going to have a podium, it's not going to have announcements, it's just come along, pick up your form, do the comp if you want, when you want. I tried another block marked as easy, and to be fair, it was fine. But I still climbed it slowly and carefully as I didn't want to drop any easy points. What are you doing differently if it's a climb for over 70s? People have been very light-hearted about that. We've called it Fossil Fest and absolutely <laughs> everyone has just smiled when we've said that. No one's been insulted, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna over-egg that. What we're most aware of is that we wanna ensure that we have down-climb jogs where people think they need them and we'll have moves that are maybe more encouraging for people that are worried about their hips or their shoulders or their elbows or their knees. So maybe the crux won't be at the top. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. This block was also marked down as easy, but it proved more of a challenge. I couldn't just reach across to the left like I've seen other people do, so I had to be a little bit more dynamic. Come Yes. I was literally figuring it out on the wall. I can't hold that one. Hence my fumbling hesitation. Coordination coming up. Yay. Big move coming up, but at least I could see what to do this time. I just had to commit. Nice move. There's no other footholds. This is painful to watch. Honestly, it feels a lot more precarious when you're up there. 
I'm so close here. Why am I so short? Oh. Yay. <laughs> oh, that was reachy. Uh, well Thanks. Claire was up next. So you can't reach it, so you need to swing and grab and then that. Got it. After that, Claire made light work of the rest of it. Yes, well done. Fantastic. Did you get that on video? Yeah. Thank you. In different age groups, they were doing different problems. So a lot of the problems will be shared. A lot of the problems that are, say, V1 to V4 are going to be in all the categories. Yeah. But there are some easier problems and there are some harder problems. Mm. So the 40s will have a few harder ones. The 50s will have fewer harder ones, the 60s and 70s, again, they're going to be stopping V4, V5. It's still hard climbing, yeah. um, but it's not as hard as you'd find in lots of competitions. But the majority of the problems are going to be in that middle section that most climbers of most ages should enjoy. Yeah. Um, hopefully. But well, those hand problems are all quite good. So I won't reach that, we need to go up. We'll go up right first. Yeah. Where his left is. I oh. Right and I up. Yeah, so stand up I do. like that. I like that move when I think of it. <laughs> One of the things I really wanted to get across in this video is just how much help and advice everyone gives each other. Where are the handholds? Is it They're above the orange? Above the ledge. Right, shall I have a go? There were so many different beaters for this one. Everyone I'd watched had done it a different way, irrespective of their height. I think being shorter might have made the first traverse section easier as I was less crunched up but there were still so many options of holds to choose from. So you might have a plan before you get on the wall, but you really don't know what it's gonna feel like until you get there. I'm being overly cautious here, as although the holds are good, it was on a slight overhang, and I didn't want to risk the likely barn door if I'd kept my left foot on that hold. I reached this next hold awkwardly, but I made it. So the holds were less good now, and it was less obvious what to do. I'd seen a few people come a cropper here, but I really wanted this flash, so I was being careful and trying out all my options. And another top out. It's never a flattering angle. One day I'll learn to do this a bit more elegantly. <laughs> Did it? In the setting team, there's five of us. Two of us are in our 50s, one in the 40s, the other two are younger. Um, but yeah, to have, have yeah. three setters in the team over 40 is quite unusual. That is brilliant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Part of the setting idea is we'll make problems that are maybe difficult, but not super strong. Most people at 50s upwards do start to lose muscle mass and lose a certain amount of strength. So there's no point setting super, super strong problems mm. if we're aiming at older climbers. Yeah. So all of these things are considered. I avoided this orange block for a while, as on first glance, it didn't appear to be that easy. It was even marked on the score sheet as not so easy. But when I root bed it, I could see a way to climb it that didn't look so bad. This is a great example of a block that's more about using thought to figure it out rather than any outright strength. And that's one aspect of climbing that I love. So one thing I'd done earlier was count the bolt holes from where I'd have to stand to match the top. As I'm only five foot tall, I can't take it for granted that I'll always reach it. I'd counted eight and my reach was eight, so I knew it would be fine. That's all right. I've set for lots of competitions. I've been involved with Blockfest for a long time, with competitions before that. And generally speaking, when you're setting, the older age group is not your primary consideration because they're going to be a small quantity. Um, here, it's going to be everybody. 40 is not that old, um, but people start to feel, I won't say excluded, but they start to feel like the comps are not for them once they pass a certain age. If you're 45, you're going to think climbing against a 25-year-old is ridiculous. Yeah, I completely agree. I started climbing at 45. Right. Um, my very first competition, I started competing, I think, a week before I was 49. Okay. So very, very late. I just love the idea of there being a category for over 70s, where if I'm still climbing at 70, 
I don't have to climb with these youngster 50 year olds. I've like got my own category. This is another one that looked a bit hard. And so I was really happy to figure this first section out. It's so frustrating for me to watch this back because at the time it felt like that next high hold on the volume above was beyond my reach. But I can now see that if I'd just given it one big push with my left leg, I would have made it. But I was out of energy Aye. by then. I'm out. What oh. age category would you be in now if you were entering? So I started climbing in the mid 80s uh, and I'd be deep into the 50s category <laughs> if, I was, if I was competing. Luckily I'm not. I'm just setting some problems. Yeah. This was another not so easy block. I found it really difficult to get to this next hold without cutting loose, which was energy sapping and meant I had less in the tank for the next section. Boulders like this are all about the technique. How and when you twist your body makes all the difference. This boulder was within my physical capability and if I'd got to this point more efficiently, then I think I'd have been able to send it. You had to keep body tension for every single move to stay on the wall. Ooh. My friend June is the same height as me, but by smearing against the wall to the right, she managed to find a much more controlled method of getting through that first crux. But she too struggled with the next one, as it's so tiring. Oh, going so well. Claire had my energy draining cut loose technique here, but she held it well. I find the beginning of this actually really difficult. Yeah. And then go top, 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 top. If you can get your foot up, it's better. There you go. Come on. Yes. That's it. You want to match? Yeah. And another one bites the dust. So being a competition for older climbers, I just think it's really, it's fantastic that you set it in one of the oldest climbing centres in the <laughs> UK. Oh <laughs> ah, yes. The wall was definitely open in 86. I started climbing here in 87. So it's definitely been around since the mid 80s. Yes. It started life as a charity, it's always been a charity. Climbing was an integral part of that right at the very beginning. And that's become the major part of it now. Yeah, it's a perfect setting for Fossil Fest. I think so, yeah. The next block I tried was in this amazing old cave called the Monkey House. I had far too many goes on this one. My little legs wouldn't reach across there and that felt wrong. <laughs> it obviously wasn't just a height thing though, as a lot of my friends struggled with it too. I kept trying it though, and the first section got easier every time. This was another very technical block where a simple change in body position would make all the difference. Yes. Yes. Come on. There were a few different options of tackling this and it was hard to figure this one out. Come on. I don't know where That's to go. It. And all the while, the strength was draining from my arms. Oh. I'm just out of puff. One of the reasons I enter competitions um, is to encourage more people to do it, even though I'm a really low level climber. Mm -hmm. So I see myself as a V2, V3 climber. But I just think the more of us that do it, the more other people will come along and just feel comfortable. Um, and that's the whole premise of my YouTube channel really, is to encourage more older people to climb and to know they can. You can call it a competition or you can call it an event because really all you're doing is you're seeing how you do. It's like saying the London Marathon is a competition. It's a competition for the few people at the front. Yeah. But the rest of it, it's an event. Yeah. And an that's event. really what we're looking at. We want to have something for a group of people um, that you know, not everyone's expecting to be the winner. Absolutely. This crimpy overhang block that I tried had a very awkward start. I had to really pull my left toe in hard to shift my weight across. This one may have been easier for shorter climbers as the start was quite bunched up. After that, it was a case of throwing my arm up to the next hold and hoping it stuck, which miraculously it did. I'm so tired by this point though, that I don't manage to keep my hips close enough to the wall. That was brilliant. Oh, it's exhausting. 
Katie was then kind enough to show me how she did it. Her technique was a lot more controlled and smooth, and again it shows what a difference your hip position and body tension can make. Really nice use of twisting and flagging here. That's fantastic! Thank you. Had you done that before? Yes. Was that your first? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Managed it so, before. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it my first go. It was yeah. second shot at it. That I got wow. It, so yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, it's one of those ones that I'd say I wasn't expecting to get the next move. Yeah any way along the way. Yeah. So when I did get it, it was just like a really nice one. One of those routes that yeah. surprises you into how it flows. I found that, like every time I, I was there, that last attempt that I had, I didn't expect to get it. And I threw my hands out and went, oh, I got it. Yes. Now what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> On that one, I did climb it a little bit smoother because I knew where I was going with yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. It, it showed. Have you done a lot of competitions? No, I've only done three other comps. Okay. Can I ask how you're finding it? I love it. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I find all the other uh, comps I've been to, everyone's really friendly, it's a really yeah. welcoming environment, yeah. but it is mostly younger people. Yes. So the thing I'm really appreciating for this one is it's all people of 40 and up. Yeah. It's a different vibe to what you're getting at other comps. Yeah, completely. Um, not that it's any more or less friendly, but it just feels nice to climb with people yeah. your own age because I do find with the rise in popularity in climbing, it's a very much a younger base coming up. I know. So it's just been wonderful, especially the number of women. Yeah. So it's just really nice meeting a lot of women yeah. of a similar age that are just you know, crushing it. It's really good. No, it's brilliant. I'm loving yeah. it here. I love the atmosphere and I love what they're doing. Yeah. 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 No, no, I hope they, I hope they keep going with it. Me too. Me too. Just make some of them a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> This is the first time I've entered a competition with a minimum age of 40. I have never seen a minimum age of 70 in the category before, and I love that. Would you say this is the first time this has ever been done in the world for a bouldering competition, certainly the UK? Um, honestly, I don't know. I haven't seen one, but that doesn't mean it hasn't. I mean, this isn't being massively world publicised, so there's probably <laughs> no. another war in the world that has done something similar. Um, I'm just aware that I see, and I guess as I get older, I'm more aware of it. At most climbing walls, there are some people in all of those age groups that yeah. are climbing. They may not want to do a competition, but this at least gives them the option of doing a competition if they want to. I imagine that this will be the first competition that a lot of people here have done. Maybe. Oh, thank you very much. No worries. No worries. I'll see you on Saturday. Yes. <laughs> How does this compare to your other competitions that I'm you've not been actually in? ever competed before, so... You've never competed? No, no so this is fresh for me. That's yeah, fantastic. Really enjoying it so far. So, hey John, how are you finding it? Uh, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's some of the more challenging than others. <laughs> it's a lot harder than I was expecting it. How's this compared to other competitions that you've done? I haven't done any other competitions, actually. This is my first one. You're so, kidding! Yeah, so this is one that uh, I felt was kind of more specifically directed to my age range. I'm in the 70 plus, so I was interested to see how other people were doing and how I did in comparison to them. It's inspiring and fantastic. It goes to show that what Dominic's done here has actually worked. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. It's a really yeah. nice idea. You're doing your very first bouldering competition over your entire life in your 70s. Yep, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>